Hey guys, what's good? Mike here, Laker Talk. Let's talk Laker basketball. I want to get my thoughts on all the trades that went down today. Trade deadline was today, and everybody was shocked. Lakers send Jordan Clarkson, Larry Dance Jr. to the Cavs for Isaiah Thomas, Shannon Fry, and the Cavs' late first round pick. Now, my initial reaction was just kind of like, whoa, right? And I wanted to see it kind of read more into it and get the pros and cons of it and in short this is a great move for the lakers uh my shock was i actually wanted the lakers to stay pat um the way i see it was larry nance jr on a two million dollar deal 2.2 million dollar deal was was excellent as off the bench Jordan Clarkson getting paid $12 million next year was excellent off the bench. That contract was excellent to me. Um, Lakers have enough space to for, um, for obviously, to go after Paul George in the offseason. And we had a lot of chemistry building right now. My only concern was whether or not we were going to. I want to match a potential Julius Randle offer sheet and I think that Lakers would be stacked going into next year or at least way better if we acquire Paul George and this chemistry that we built carry on over to next year now when you read into it they're saying that this is all cap space now we open it up for two we have enough money for two cap cap uh, players obviously Paul George and LeBron James and folks are like, why do you want to go after LeBron James? Any deal that potentially is going to acquire LeBron James, you do that deal. Why? Because LeBron James only wants a one-year deal anyway. If it didn't work out, he's going to give you, even at 34 years of age, he's going to give you, what, 27, 10, and 8, right? And... If it didn't work out, let's just say he wanted to bounce after that and go to the Spurs or something like that, then we would still have that cap money for a Clay Thompson in 2019. So it's a win-win situation for the Lakers if we do go after Paul George. Now, signing two max players that for long-term deals, that one's kind of iffy. You want to make sure you those two max players are guys you want to keep long-term. Uh, but signing like a LeBron James to a one-year deal would be an excellent situation for the Lakers and for uh, LeBron James. Um, that would be ideal. Obviously, we would lock Paul George into a max contract for over four years or so. Um, now, if now that's that's all that's all wishful thinking, right? There is no there's no way close no way possible that it's guaranteed that LeBron James would come to the Lakers, right? We know that his kids are going to school out here, or there are some rumors about that, and he has a home out here. Um, we'll see what the Cavs do in the playoffs and, and see what LeBron James does in the offseason. But if he wants to come to the Lakers, obviously I think that's going to be available. And now we got two guys, Paul George and LeBron James, and that's it. If what's going to happen in the offseason is Julius Randle will get an offer sheet, okay? Now, we're going to go after Paul George on day one of opening free agency in the summer, okay? It's going to be laid out. The contract will be laid out and given an offer to him. I, 95, 98% sure that he's going to sign that deal, right? We're going to get that deal. Now, Julius Randle is going to get offer sheets, okay? Lakers have like, I think, three weeks to match that deal. So you're going to see a lot of offer sheets come in for Julius Randle. The Lakers don't have to match it right away, right? We're now going to go after like the LeBron James and say, hey, you still want to come to the Lakers? We got Paul George. We got Lonzo. We got, you know, uh, Brandon Ingram. Um, you want to come? If he says no, then we can go after and match that potential offer sheet for Julius Randle, and we stay with Julius Randle. And now we still have a, a solid team. We got Julius Randle back. We got Brandon Ingram, Lonzo, Paul George. Um, we got Josh Hart, Kyle Kuzma, right? And we have, I think, some more money at that point to, to re-sign, go after, uh, you know, a couple of bigs or whatnot. But we'll be in a great situation, um, the way I see it. The way Josh Hart's developing, that's going to, you know, take um, KCP's spot. And also, he's going to fill that void uh, for, for also, he's going to get more minutes 
he's going to fill the void of Jordan Clarkson. Um, so that's excellent um, there. And also Kuzma is going to get more minutes, right? And he's going to develop. And so we'll be straight. So when you look at it, it's a, it's a win-win for the Lakers. Now, we're, we're totally ignoring the fact that Isaiah Thomas is still a good player, but things change fast, man. Isaiah Thomas had an MVP season uh, with the Boston Celtics. He obviously had this damaging hip injury that could be career-threatening or whatnot, and he's still not healed from that. He's not the same player, all right? Just, just face it. He's not the same player. So I'm not looking at Isaiah Thomas like I was three years ago when I'm like, dang, man, we should have had him when he was with Phoenix or with the Kings, and we wanted to pick him up. This is before we had Lonzo. But now it's almost like Isaiah Thomas is this cat that should get, get to a team and he's going to put up 22 points a game, you know, uh, four assists and three rebounds or whatever. But I just don't see it with the Lakers, right? So I see this as a rental, a one-year rental. I'm excited to see what he does. Obviously, when Lonzo comes back, he's going to come off the bench. Lonzo, you got KCP in there, um, Brandon Ingram, Julius, and Lopez, and I like Isaiah Thomas coming off the bench for the Lakers in the half of the last half of the season. I think that's going to be exciting. You know, give him a lot of minutes. Just play him. We have nothing to lose, right? He's coming. His books is coming off. Like, let him play. Let him get his numbers up. Let him get his shots up to the point to where he can demand that contract that he wants in the offseason. And I think that's going to be really exciting for the Lakers after the All-Star break this second half. And so, um, you know, utilize Shannon Fry as much as we can uh, for what it's worth this year. Let him shoot from the outside, you know, if, if he still has that shot. Um, but so I think going into the second half is exciting. And then next year, obviously, we're set up perfectly for Paul George, LeBron James, or Paul George and a re-signing of Julius Randle, in my opinion. Now, you, some of you are probably saying, Mike, you really want Julius Randle? Let me know, besides Julius Randle, who out there is going to give you 15 and 10 every single night? Um, what player do you think we would go after instead of a Julius Randle? So that, that would be my thoughts for those of you who think that I'm tripping on Julius Randle or not. But I see Julius Randle uh, as valuable now, and uh, I do want to keep him uh, if all possible. So um, I don't know if we have enough for two max players and Julius Randle. That would be crazy. So that's my thoughts. Um, but that's my thoughts right now. At first, I was like a little sad to see guys go, you know, homegrown guys. Larry Nance Jr., he's a good guy. And just seeing guys get traded. You know, we were playing with chemistry. I just thought it was like, it was kind of like a bummer. Um, you know, my initial thoughts. But, you know, after a few hours pass, I'm kind of like looking at it from a business standpoint. And I think it goes well for those guys. They get to play in Cleveland and get to go into the playoffs and try to do some stuff. Uh, Larry Nance Jr. can go, you know, back to where his dad played, I think, in Cleveland. And uh, Clarkson, you know, he, he can he can go and see what he can do out there. And uh, other than that, man, that's my thoughts on what's going on with the Lakers right now and uh, my thoughts on this trade. Overall, I think it's a, it's a good deal. And I know this, come summer in a few months, 2018, when that free agency open, it's going to be super exciting. That's my thoughts. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for commenting, liking, and subscribing. As always, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MikeSportsLA. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.